Hi, everybody. Welcome to Education Week and your lecture on diabetes. Everything I'm going to tell you is on this website called Diabetes Canada. So if you look it up, you will see all these other guidelines and there are resources, including videos that you can watch if you have diabetes. I strongly suggest if you know anybody with diabetes, if you are diabetic, to certainly use this particular website. It has a lot of good resources and there are other language um, translations as well. So what is diabetes? Diabetes is often, diabetes mellitus is often referred to as diabetes and it's a condition where the blood sugar rises to a level that can damage internal organs where fasting blood glucose of 7.0 or more. Right away, the, red blood, the blood cells may be starved for energy and over time, high blood glucose levels can damage the eyes, the kidney, nerves and the heart. So what is diabetes? It's a disease that you are not producing enough insulin or the insulin is not working properly and such that glucose is building up into your blood and is not entering your cells to, to, to allow it to use the energy. If left unmanaged your diabetes, the excess sugar can cause some serious health complications and we talk about microvascular and macrovascular complications and I like to term it microvascular makes your life miserable, macrovascular kills you. So those are the two major problems with diabetes. People usually have no symptoms and can go with undiagnosed diabetes for years and I'm thrilled that you're joining us because not everybody knows how close they are to diabetes. Once they get handed the diagnosis of diabetes, Unfortunately, what happens is it's affecting eight different organ systems, everything from the pancreas to skeletal muscles, to the liver, to the incretin cells in the gut, to glucagon secretion, free fatty acids, neurotransmitters in the brain, and glucose reabsorption in the kidneys. So how big is the problem of diabetes? Well, globally, one in 11 adults, which is 11 people on this call, one of us would be diabetic, has diabetes, but it has gone from being a problem that is basically almost one and a half itself in, in a few years. So the idea being it is, it is multiplying and 80% of diabetics will live in low and middle income countries. So what is the problem with diabetes? Why is everybody so worked up about it? Well, two thirds of diabetics will die of cardiovascular disease. Diabetes with this hemoglobin A1C, and I'll explain to you what that is in a minute, increases your risk of cardiovascular disease by 10 to 30%. And for every 10 years with diabetes, you have an 86% increased risk of having a cardiac death. So when I talked about diabetes, I talked about microvascular complications such as the eyes, the kidneys, and the nerves that can result in making your life miserable. And that really does impact you because if left unchecked, kidney damage can result in you being on dialysis. Macrovascular is what makes what unfortunately kills you and it can affect you in such a way to, to put you at increased risk of a stroke of heart attack and heart disease and extremities with peripheral vascular disease, which also increases your risk of dying. I love this slide because it lets you understand that at the diagnosis of diabetes, five years before that, stuff was going on. So there was microvascular complications already started. And 10 years before that, that the macrovascular complications started and it was your glucose was slowly increasing in your blood, the mm -hmm. insulin resistance was, was happening and your beta cell functioning was going down. It didn't just happen, it was happening for a while. So one of the things you need to do is if you are diabetic, you need to get past the fact that there's any sort of guilt, you haven't been eating a bunch of sweets and you're, you're guilty of it. It could be partially genetic, but you have to now take control. How do you diagnose diabetes? There's actually four different ways. There's fasting blood sugar, which is 
caloric intake of no, no calories in for eight to 10 hours, and then you check your blood sugar, and it's either 6.1 to 6.9, which means it's impaired or prediabetes, or it's above seven and you're diabetic. So the idea being, um, you could either do that, and this is your, uh, this is your glucose first thing in the morning when you wake up. This is not your random glucose. This is your, then there's a two hour oral glucose challenge test where you go to the lab and you check your blood sugar after you've been fasting. They've given you a drink of 75 grams of sugar, which is usually orange. And then they test you two hours later and you're between 7.8 to 11 year of IGT. And if you're above 11, you're diabetic. If your hemoglobin A1C is between six to 6.4, or above, you're pre-diabetic, above 6.5 if you're diabetic. So I want you to look at this picture right here. And it's a good understanding that your red blood cells have, um, have glucose attached to it in the form of hemoglobin A1C. So this test is your three month blood sugar control. It's not just what you ate. It's not the fact that I cheated on Christmas day or had a big meal on Thanksgiving, none of that. It's your three month blood sugar control. So it's fairly accurate in terms of your type two diabetes as to whether or not you're controlling your blood sugar well. And this is often a target for where you need to be to achieve where your goals are. And remember, you have access to all your own blood work and you can look at it. I don't tend to like the random glucose because that could be based on what you ate and, and, and what you're doing. So I don't tend to prefer that one as much. One of the things we strongly urge you to do is, is uh, get a sheet that if you're diabetic, and I've got this one right here, signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. And I've got this slide over here, which you can find very easily, is what are your signs and symptoms? And keep in mind everything from shakiness to racing heart rate, to sweating, to dizziness, to anxiety, to irritability. And remember I said on my medication uh, talk yesterday, if you're irritable and your spouse says, what's biting you? That's actually a good thing because maybe your blood sugar is low and it would come up with, with orange juice and you can check it before. And when you have to have a protein, you have to have a protein and a fast sugar. So you would normally have like a bit of juice because it's, it's more fast acting than eating something. And then maybe a piece of cheese, then that would allow you to uh, bring up your blood sugar and maintain it. So we don't want to do these highs and lows, but we want to keep it and maintain it. So the type of food you eat is so important. Hyperglycemia is when your blood sugar is too high and you have things of extreme thirst, feeling the need to urinate often, very dry skin, hunger, blurry vision, drowsiness, slow wound healing. And again, you, you measure this, you look at your hemoglobin A1C when you're checking your blood sugars post-exercise. Uh, because you're in, in cardiac rehab, you're finding that you're consistently high, then you may need to readjust your medications. So what would be my targets? That's the part you want to know. What's my goal? If you're a new diagnosed diabetic that doesn't have uh, other confounding issues such as being functionally dependent or unaware of your hypoglycemia or liver uh, limited life expectancy or frail elderly, their hemoglobin A1C is a little bit higher because you can't take the risk of not being able to tell if you're, if you're having a hypoglycemic event. For most people, you want to achieve a hemoglobin A1C of less than seven, but ideally to decrease your risk of uh, uh, retinopathy or eventually becoming blind or, or to decrease a chronic kidney disease, you want to maintain your hemoglobin A1C less than 6.5. So what would be my targets of, of, for, for diabetes? And I want you to realize this lecture is not about repeating everything that you go through in diabetic daycare, but it's more about getting you thinking, am I close to diabetes? Where am I in the spectrum? If I've got family members, what is it that they're supposed to be doing? If this is me and I'm diabetic, what am I supposed to be doing? So there's the A, B, C, D, E's and three S's at the end of it. So A is get your hemoglobin A1C less than seven or 6.5 with medication. Blood pressure targets, we want our blood pressure when we measure it to be under 130 on 80 and assess for risk of falls. 
You want your cholesterol to be less than 1.8. We talked about it yesterday, less than 1.4, saves two heart attacks for every 100 people treated if you've had a previous event. Certainly drugs that are for decreasing cardiovascular risk reduction. We talked about the four life-saving medications on Wednesday, the ACE and the ARBs, the statins, the aspirin if you have uh, cardiovascular disease, but if you're diabetic, certainly there's certain categories of medications that have been proven to decrease, um, uh, uh, to proven to give you cardiovascular benefit. When we talk about exercising goals, these do not contradict your goals for cardiac rehab. We still want at least 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise of aerobics a day, at least two to three times resistance, and we want to be following what they call a diabetic diet or a low glycemic diet, a Mediterranean diet or the DASH diet. None of these are inconsistent. They're all consistent together. We want to screen for complications such as do an ECG every few years, look at yearly uh, microfilament or foot, uh, foot tests. Now, certainly during COVID, some of these yearly tests have been pushed off. We want to get some blood work done regularly to look at our kidney function and monitor how that is going and to get your eye exams. Again, some of those could have been pushed off a bit during COVID as well. If you are a smoker or living with a smoker, we need to look at decreasing that risk because smoking does push you into diabetes and it also worsens, worsens your outcomes. So we need to look at that strategy for cardiovascular disease of decreasing or quitting smoking and how do we help you achieve that? And the last part of it is self-management and setting personalized individualized goals, similar to what you're doing in cardiac rehab. Assess for stress and mental health. Again, our webinar that's coming up on May the 1st is gonna look at that whole picture of managing stress and taking control over your health and setting goals. And that's on May 1st. One of the things I mentioned to you on Wednesday was that there was a class of medications that included angiotensin receptor blockers and ACE inhibitors that you needed to hold if you had vomiting or diarrhea or severe di dehydration, in which case if you had the stomach flu or couldn't hold anything down, you had to hold medications instead of taking them because you could temporarily worsen your kidney function. And those drugs are called the sad mans, S for sulfonylurea or secretagogues, A for ACE inhibitors, uh, A for angiotensin receptor blockers, D for diuretics or water pills, M for metformin, N for non steroidal anti-inflammatories, and remember those were all the painkillers uh, that were related to aspirin, and S for SGLT2s. So remember, if you don't know this and you're not feeling well, your friend and someone you can rely on is your pharmacist, reach out to them. What are the areas of focus? We're going to talk about these again, and I keep saying the same things in different ways. Understand and know your disease state. So the first thing you're going to get from this lecture is, if I'm diabetic or pre-diabetic, I need to learn more. If I'm living with a diabetic, I need to be aware of things that they need to watch out for. We need to be following a diabetic diet, which is, which is not inconsistent with the DASH diet or the Mediterranean diet. A minimum of 150 minutes of aerobic exercise, but we say ideally at least an hour every day, seven days a week. Now remember, the more frequently you exercise, you don't have to do that full hour together. The more frequently you exercise, the better your, your blood sugars run. So a walk after each meal would be fantastic and ideal. Resistance training is key, especially for someone with diabetes because you have to build that muscle mass up to some degree. Weight loss, which is tough to do on some of those medications. Watching out for signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia by monitoring your self glucose, self monitoring your blood glucose at least once to four times a day, and daily foot inspections. I encourage you, if you're living with a diabetic, they check your feet, you check their feet. A daily foot massage, fantastic. And the last part, anybody living with a chronic health, chronic disease will be more predisposed to having depression and anxiety symptoms. And if you do have these, especially during COVID, reach out to your family doctor to ask for help. If you do smoke, please try and quit or decrease with the help of either a pharmacist or your healthcare provider. Again, the goals are to look at improving your diet. So look at uh, this thing, if you have some family health teams have a dietitian attached, Eventually, after COVID, we're going to be bringing back our, um, our um, private dietitian. Um, 
look at being more active remember the resistance training we're going to talk about it but the diabetes canada website actually has a link that you can follow and you can improve that resistance training if you're in cardiac rehab i will show you the, the pages in here that talk about strength training and what to do so certainly for this book that we have you can ask to get a copy it's free look at strategies to decrease some calories take your medications correctly now probably what i should have said in that medication lecture was that medications work if you take them they don't seem to be as effective if you're not taking them and it seems kind of redundant but it's important that you take them consistently try to avoid hypoglycemia by recognizing the signs and if your family members suggest to you that you're a little bit off maybe check your blood sugar at the time or um, or your this thing or drink a little bit of orange juice remember to check your blood sugar check your feet daily learn to manage your stress realize that when we're asking you how you're doing we expect that honesty to come out and that in that in, like that introspective look that you have to ask how am i doing and it, it's for some people that's a challenge and finally to look at bear look at identify barriers that will uh, that will help you quit and decrease your smoking we talk about the plate and again i have this little handy dandy you know me and my props we want the vegetables to be at least one half of your plate we want the meats and alternatives to be about the size of your um above your uh your fist and uh the, the grains to be one quarter of your plate so this is your plan for healthy eating and remember i i may have mentioned this on a previous talk but the Brazilian diet basically says sit down at the table, enjoy the time eating, have a conversation and make that a pleasurable event. Even if you're sitting down by yourself, you may enjoy the, uh, the meal on Zoom with somebody else. So fruits, grains and starches about the size of your fist, vegetables, the amount of both of your palms, of both of your hands, meat and alternatives, the size of your palm and the fats on your on your the on your thumb and it's based on your hand size and not somebody else's so it is so important to try and exercise and try and keep yourself active for example standing try and stand for at least half the day which means this lecture can be watched instead of sitting down you can stand up and watch it try to have every a uh, few minutes uh maybe once an hour or a little bit of a break a minimum of 10,000 steps, but 14 to 16,000 steps for some weight loss. Try for some uh, light activity during the day, such as walking and, and, and things like mild housework and some gardening, but moderate to intense activity for at least 150 minutes per week. Now, I mentioned to you that the Diabetes Canada website, this is the link for the workout. Remember, you go on that Diabetes Canada website and you can click on the link and it will do the workout with you. There are other workouts that you can do that we recommend in cardiac rehab. So there are standard recommendations by Diabetes Canada that says healthy behavior interventions should be introduced. It is not just medications alone, but at the time you can also introduce metformin in conjunction with other healthy behaviors. When we talk about diabetes and cardiovascular risk, there are certain medications that have proven themselves, the flozins and the, the things that cause you to pee more, some of the injectables that are non-insulin. To decrease heart failure, there's, there's a set of medications that have done that. And your, to improve your kidney function, there's a set of medications that have proven that as well. So they are medications out there and they're constantly coming out in trials. Remember to protect your kidneys, and to decrease your risk of both heart failure and cardiovascular disease, you're looking at your LDL and your triglycerides, you're looking at your blood pressure, you're looking at some of your medications, and you're looking closely at your diabetes medications as well. The strategy is four different ways, improving diet, exercise and healthy weight, the medication, but the other more important part that only you have control over is the self-management through lifestyle. One of the things that every diabetic educator needs to warn you about is five to drive. Keep in mind, if you are a, di a diabetic, if you have your active license, you have to maintain your blood sugar at least above five so you're not hypoglycemic behind the wheel. If that happens, you could potentially lose your license if you meet with an accident. 
So keep in mind, five to drive. And within arm's reach, not in your purse where you can't reach it, but within arm's reach, you have to have something that is able to bring your blood sugar up. So I strongly suggest maybe an apple uh, while you're driving or before you leave the house or a nice healthy snack like some nuts that you can keep in the car. You can keep a juice box in the car. There's all sorts of strategies that we can give you and you can certainly speak to your family doctor or diabetes educator. Now we're going to look at the point of setting goals. And this is something that you would do regardless of whether you are diabetic, when you're in cardiac rehab. Personalized goals are so key to an effective uh, strategy for, uh, for cardiac rehab. So setting these goals, they've got to be specific, they've got to be measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely, which means smart, okay? So saying something like, I want to lose 10 pounds in two weeks is not a smart goal. It is not measure, it is not specific enough, it is not necessarily realistic, and it is not necessarily achievable. So an example of that is to say, I'm going to be walking from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. every single day, and if it rains pre-COVID or post-COVID, I could walk in the mall, or if it's a big snowy day, I'm gonna go mall walking that day. If somebody wants to talk to me or join me at that, that's fine, they can join me during that event, not a problem. So to make your uh, diabetes goals, set a specific goal, create the action plan. Certainly you can use uh, Nick and Jonathan to help you with this, how to make your goal achievable, discuss overwhelming or challenges, support and get resources that you would need and decide how important is my goal on a scale of one to 10? How important is it? How confident am, is it? How confident am I that I can achieve it? Now, 